Bill Squires once said that the long run puts the tiger in the cat. And I couldn't agree more. I actually think the long run is arguably the most important run of the week for almost all runners. And that's because most runners are most handicapped by their lack of endurance, especially if you're starting to run later in life. If you, didn't, you don't have this big long history of being an athlete, you didn't start running when you were 13 years old, you probably will be a much faster runner if you build your endurance. And if we acknowledge that most runners are lacking in endurance, because after all, most of us can run really fast, but some of us can hold on to that for a much longer period of time. So if you can only run fast for 10 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, this is an endurance problem. If we build our endurance, we'll be able to better hold that speed for longer periods of time. And of all the types of workouts that we can do, the one workout that best builds endurance is the long run. Now, the long run is simply the longest run that you're gonna do every week. There's not some magical distance that signifies a run as a long run, like it has to be double digits or something like that. No, the long run is simply your longest run during the week. And I certainly want to encourage you to try to run a long run most weeks. If not every week, then at least most weeks during the year that you are training. Because the long run really helps you build consistency. It really helps you feel better during all the other runs that you do during the week. Because after all, if you think about it, if you're used to running for two hours on the weekend and most of your runs during the week are only an hour, well, you are very well trained for those hour long runs. And so the long run is gonna give you the endurance, the strength, and the running economy or efficiency that's gonna really help you in so many other different types of runs and also races. And that's what we all want, right? We wanna race faster. And the long run is one of the best ways to do that. So in this video, I wanna talk about three of my favorite types of long runs because long runs aren't all the same. Yes, you can go out there for an easy effort the entire distance that you're running for your long run, and that's still a long run. And in fact, most of your long runs should be at an easy pace. Long runs are simply glorified easy runs. They should be done at a relatively easy effort. But sometimes, especially if you're an intermediate or more advanced runner, we can do more complex things within our long run to get more out of it. Now, sometimes these long runs are a tad shorter than they normally would be because we're gonna add some quality in there. And so if you're just getting started with some of these types of long runs, it might be best to cut your long run by one, two, or three miles as you incorporate these strategies. And so my first favorite type of long run that we're gonna talk about today is the hilly long run. And there's all kinds of different variations of the hilly long run. So variation one is you could simply do your long run as a roller coaster run. Now a roller coaster run is one where for as much time as possible during the run, you are either running uphill or downhill. So you're finding as hilly terrain as possible. Some of you I know live in very hilly locations, so maybe a lot of your runs are roller coaster runs. And if you're spending a lot of that time running uphill, running downhill, running long hills, short hills, steep hills, hills that have a, a fairly low grade to them, you're just building all kinds of additional strength and general athleticism that's gonna make you into a better runner. Now, the other type of really great long run hill session that I love is finding the longest hill that you can find. A hill that maybe is two miles, one, two, or maybe even three miles long and you practice running up that hill during the final couple miles of your long run. So what you're doing is essentially ending your long run with one big long climb. And of course you can start simple with this and maybe only do a half mile. And as you build capability, as you build your fitness, you can gradually build the uphill section of this type of long run to up to a couple miles. And this is wonderful at giving you an extra aerobic stimulus so that you're building even more endurance and it's gonna build a lot of strength. Our next type of long run is the fartlek long run. Now, if you're someone who struggles with long runs, maybe you get really tight afterwards and you just can't seem to shake that 
or maybe over the last couple miles of this long run, you start to get very tight and you just, you don't really feel good. A fartlek long run can actually help with that if you keep it pretty easy. Now, obviously a fartlek, th these are simply time-based repetitions. You could do five times a minute, three times five minutes. All of these are examples of fartlek workouts. And what I like to do in a long run is over the final two to five miles, incorporate some pickups, some fartlek repetitions. And if we can do very short, not necessarily very fast repetitions, so maybe 30 seconds and you speed up to about 10K pace. This is not very difficult, especially your 6.2 mile race distance, your 10K pace, for only 30 seconds, it's not very challenging, but it's enough to open up your range of motion. It's enough to recruit more muscle fibers and it will wake up your legs. You are gonna feel so much better. At the end of this run, if you were to do as, as many as 10, but as few as just four repetitions of 30 seconds. Now, if you're more advanced and you're not simply trying to shake the cobwebs out of your legs, we can do a, a couple more, more advanced things, some more complex types of fart licks during the end of our runs. And so when you're doing your long run, maybe over the final half, you could do something simple like a minute on and a minute off. And that minute on can be 5K pace, 10K pace, half marathon pace, depending on what you're training for and your ability. You can also do longer repetitions, but the real goal of doing a fartlek long run is to get your legs turning over when you're already tired. A little bit will accomplish a lot. So don't bite off more than you can chew if you're just starting this type of long run. Start with some 30 second repetitions and then you can build to one or two minutes. Get good recovery afterwards. I think at least a minute, but maybe up to two minutes would be just fine during this type of a workout. And if you start doing fart like long runs every couple of weeks, I think your fitness is gonna improve at a much faster rate. And you're probably gonna start feeling better after those long runs too. The last type of long run that I love doing is a progression long run. Now there's two types of ways that we can do this. We can do this the long, but slower way, or we could do it the shorter but faster way. Now, let's start with the long but slower way. Now, I like to negative split most of my runs, and it's pretty simple if the first one or two miles is much slower than your average pace, because you're just getting warmed up, you're easing into the run, easing into the pace. It's pretty easy to run the first mile a lot slower, maybe 20, 30, 40 seconds slower than the average pace you might be running. And so a negative split long run where you are going to progress in pace over the course of that long run is going to have you start really easy but the long and slow version of this is going to have you gradually get a little bit faster and a little bit faster so that by the end of the run the last mile maybe or the final one or two kilometers you're running about half marathon or marathon race pace and this gradual turning up of the temperature as you go through this run First of all, it requires a lot of mental control. So if you're someone who's not very good at pacing yourself, this is a great type of run to learn pace control because the entire point of this run is to make every mile just a little bit faster than the previous mile. Now, most of the miles in this run should still be at your easy pace or very close to your easy pace. Only the final quarter of this run should really be at a pace that's faster than your easy pace. Now the other type of long run that we can do that I love, it's a little bit more challenging, is the same type of progression, but we're only going to do it over the final half of the long run. So the first half can just be easy, you don't need to worry about negative splitting that section of the run, but as soon as you're into the final, let's say 5 to 10 miles, then we can start negative splitting the run there and progress, get a little bit faster mile after mile. Now, because we're not progressing for as long, we can progress to a slightly faster pace. So with this progression, you can end at maybe 10K or 5K pace. Now, of course, the entire final mile doesn't have to be at 5K or 10K pace, maybe just the final few minutes. So you're just, even within a single mile, you're progressing in pace. Now, this is a more advanced workout because you're gonna be running a lot faster and also at the end of the run, so you're gonna be even more tired. It's just more advanced. So start with the easy one first. Don't go as fast. Just keep that slow burn going during the run. And 
when you're ready, when you've built the fitness, when you feel like you've really developed some better pace control, then you can attempt that more challenging progression long run. So I hope this video has given you a couple new ideas as you tackle your training and start incorporating more long runs into your schedule. Now remember, I think the long run is probably the most important run for most runners, especially if you are training for a half marathon or a marathon. And if you're not, if say you're a 5K athlete, well, it's probably the second most important run of the week after the workout. So take it seriously, be super consistent about it. And I know that if you string together three to six months of consistent long runs, you vary them by using some of these workouts you're gonna become a much stronger runner, you're gonna have more endurance, and ultimately, you're gonna be a lot faster. So I hope you enjoyed this, and if you got any value out of this video, I would so appreciate it if you were to subscribe to our channel and hit that like button so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos.